So this is the question. We would like to know for what value of p will the integral from 1 to infinity 1 over x to the p power dx converges. Sometimes people will call this, this is the p test for integral or the p integral. Anyways, this is type 1 of the improper integral because we have an infinite interval. So by definition, we change the infinity to a t value and then we take the t approach to infinity. And then this is the definition. Now, to integrate 1 over x to the p power, we actually have to consider two cases. When p is equal to 1 versus when p is not equal to 1. Because when p is equal to 1, we are talking about 1 over x to the first power like this. And then what's the integral of 1 over x to the first power? The answer to that is ln x. And then we still have the limit of the integration from 1 to t. And then what we do right here is just plugging t into x and then subtract, plugging 1 into x like that. So you just do the integrations, and now we have to compute the limit. What do we get when we have t is approaching the infinity of ln t? Well, you can write it down as ln of infinity, and then the answer for that is infinity. We know ln of 1 is just going to be 0. So all in all, we know this right here diverges, because we have infinity minus 0, which is infinity, right? Diverges when p is equal to 1. Game over. And now, if p is not equal to 1, how can we integrate this? We can look at 1 over x to the p power as x to the negative p power, and then we can use the reverse power rule. Namely, look at the exponent, I'll add 1 to the power first, and this is my new exponent, I will divide it by the new exponent, which is negative p plus 1. So the antiderivative of x to the negative p is x to the 1 minus p. I just change this backwards. Negative p plus 1 is the same as 1 minus p. And then we have on the denominator, negative p plus 1, which is the same as 1 minus p. Okay? So we do the antiderivative, and then we still have the limits of integrations, plugging t into x first, and then subtract, plugging 1 into x. And this is what we have. And then we now take the limit when t goes to infinity. Take a look of this part. This is just a number, so this is very good. This is the troublesome. When we have t is approaching infinity, so we have infinity to some power and then divide by some number, okay? Luckily, we know that p is not equal to 1 because that's my case right here. p is not equal to 1, so we don't have infinity to the zero power. And then we're just talking about when we have infinity to a non-zero power, what kind of possibilities are we going to get? We only have two possibilities. If we're talking about infinity to a non-zero power, it's that number either is negative when that number is positive. When we have infinity to a negative power, the negative power will bring this down to the denominator, and then 1 over infinity will be 0. And then when we have infinity to a positive exponent, it doesn't matter what the positive number is. It can be like 5, it can be like 1.2, it can be like 0 0.4 or something. As long as it's a positive solid number, infinity to a positive number will be infinity. Okay? Well, Right here, we only have two possible outcomes. This is either equal to zero. How do we know? This is either equal to, e e this is either equal to zero when we have the exponent, the one minus p, which is the exponent, being negative. Once again, infinity to a negative exponent, we get zero. So that's why I set up one minus p, which is the exponent. I want to have negative exponent, so I want 1 minus p to be less than 0. And then you do this, you do that, you get p is greater than 1 for this case. So this will go to 0 if p is greater than 1. On the other hand, this will go to infinity. In another word, the whole thing will diverge. This will go to infinity if the exponent is positive. right? So that's why I set up the exponent, which is 1 minus p, to be positive, which is greater than 0. And then you do this, you do that. In another word, you get p is less than 1. If p is less than 1, the whole thing diverges. OK, so here's the conclusion. The integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the p power dx, it converges only if when p is greater than 1. And that's the situation right here. We must have this guy to be 0 for, uh, for this to converge. And then this integral diverges. We have two situations. The first situation is when we have p is less than 1. That's what we talk about it right here. 
right? But we have p is less than one. But then we also have if p is equal to one. So this integral diverge if p is less than or equal to one. Okay. So that's that. And then let me just show you something really cool. Notice that if you want to evaluate the integral from one to infinity, one over x to p power dx, you see. The only way that you are going to get actual answer instead of diverge is that when you have p is greater than one. And then when you have p is greater than one, this is equal to zero, and then you only have negative one over one minus p left. And that's what I wrote down right here. This integral will be negative negative one, well one to the any power is just one, so that's why I just wrote down one, over one minus p. And then I can flip the bottom subtraction, so this is 1 over p minus 1. And this formula works if p is greater than 1. For example, if we have the integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the 5 power. And as you can see, 5 is of course bigger than 1, so we can apply this formula. We know the answer to this is going to be 1 over 5 for p, and then minus 1, which is 1 over 4. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this.